Time for a family reunion. Let's look at the rise of the planet of the humans and investigate our family tree. First off, one should be able to list and define primate sin apomorphies. So what are the things that are shared by the various groups? List and define evidences for primate monophyly. So what do we all have in common? Think about it genetically, morphologically, and of course, behaviorally. Diagram the primate phylogeny, and I mean roughly. So I mean just to so be able to draw where are the chimps, where are the chumps, where are the monkeys. Define and compare platyrine and catarine monkeys, and explain why all this actually matters. Uh, my clicker is malfunctioning today. So the question today is, who are we related to? We're going to be looking at this primate family tree, and we're going to see what are our closest living relatives. Later on, we'll look at our closest extinct relatives as well. Why does it matter, though? Well, there was a tale told by the Curio people in, uh, in South America of how they related to the forest, that they got their knowledge from the forest, that their, um, the wife of a great uh, Tyrio tribesman was, a, um, was actually able to shapeshift into a monkey. So when he ended up killing out all the monkeys, among them, he ended up killing off his wife who was shapeshifted at that, ma at that time. The connection between humans and the wild is very intimate, if we let it to be. If we don't, however, we could drive everything to extinction. So does it matter that we are destroying our closest relatives? That's really an ethical question, and this is a biology class. What are the implications, though, of finding extant relatives? So we find chimps, we find bonobos, we find gorillas. We find that they're related to us. What are the implications of that? Can we learn from their behaviors? Can we get diseases from them? What are the implications of finding extinct relatives, though? What caused their extinction? Were we in the same type of problems? So I want to first clear a common misconception. We always hear, did humans evolve from chimps? Are, are humans descended from, uh, from chimpanzees? Are, if, if so, why are there still chimpanzees? Well, this is a silly argument because no, we didn't evolve from chimpanzees. We share a common ancestor with chimpanzees. And here is the family tree that we're going to be spending our time on. So here we are at the very bottom there. And I do want to point out that if you were to read this any other way, you could see, you know, you can rotate around any of those nodes. Just being there at the bottom doesn't mean that we are the most evolved primate. Uh, it's just that we put ourselves at the bottom because we are capable of drawing graphs. Very arbitrary. So let's look at what are the primates. So first and foremost, all primates have grasping digits. They have binocular vision. This combines things like, like tarsiers, lorises, lemurs, along with everything else in there. Loris is actually poisonous. It's actually got some glands in its, uh, its elbow that are able to be uh, used for poison. The tarsier is nocturnal. Uh, lemurs, they can leap from tree to tree very easily, bound along the ground. So these are the things we share with what we call the prosimians. And the prosimians are those, you know, lemurs, lurises, podia, potos, tarsiers. Those are kind of more the uh, ancestral primates. They're more related to, they're, they're, they're related to us, yes, but they're kind of a farther away down the phylogenetic tree, separated by us by about 55 million years of evolution. The next group would be the anthropoids. So the anthropoids are related because they all are diurnal. So the tarsiers are nocturnal, coming out at night with a binocular vision, allowing them to gauge the distance between places on the trees that they can leap to and from. Uh, anthropoids are all diurnal. So we're out during the day. We have, okay, not you, college student. Uh, we have larger brain cases relative to our body sizes. We also can tend to, uh, tend to form large social groups with extended parental care. We are, um, some of us are arboreal. Um, not me, personally. I am ground-dwelling, but this is something that is between this group. Some are arboreal, some are ground-dwelling, but we're all out during the daytime. Now you'll notice, of course, you'll think about the monkeys, gibbons, orangutans, gorillas, and us. And what we see is that we all love fruit. Some of us will occasionally eat a, and we'll all eat bugs from time to time, whether it be on purpose or by choice. Um, the insectivores that are at the base of the tree, not so much. All of these creatures, and I believe I speak for all of them, figs. Absolutely delicious. We all love figs. It's kind of one of those things that a lot of monkeys will actually be distributing those. So we do have a lot in common with the other anthropoids. We have more in common, and here are the cover monkeys. We don't consider ourselves to be monkeys because monkeys are a distinct group within the anthropoids. So there are two types of monkeys that we're going to look in here. First are the platyrine monkeys. 
the platyrrhine, those have uh, the new world. So those are your Brazilian monkeys. Uh, those are your uh, colobus monkeys, your howler monkeys. They're uh, primarily diurnal. Yep, okay, just like us. Rounded lateral nostrils and the sides of the nose. They may even have prehensile tails. Uh, Catarine monkeys, on the other hand, they don't have those prehensile tails. They have slit lick downward facing nostrils, except Voldemort. Um, they have a well developed sitting pad. So um, you could say Catarine monkeys got booty if you want to. That would be a weird way of saying it, but um, not a prehensile tail. So they are capable of sitting down on the branches, not hanging from the branches. Think about that. The big one, though, is that platyrrhine monkeys are New World. And if you want some bit of mystery, find out how the platyrrhine monkeys got to the New World because they, uh, the monkeys are generally an old world thing. Some got to the New World. Look at the timeline, figure out how. It's a little more questions than I know I, than I want to answer. Then you have the hominoids. Homin hominoids. The gibbons and the apes. Um, the gibbons, not really much of a tail. We all have uh, relatively long arms compared to our body size. Uh, not much of a tail, if anything, um, or no tail whatsoever. Very organized socially. And it's the brain just keeps on getting bigger compared to the body size as this increases. So much more complex social behavior, including very flexible behavior, very good at learning. These are animals that are quick to learn. Um, we, have, we still have some of them at the zoos, and you'll see them bouncing around their cages. Uh, long arms, being able to bracciate between things with most of these, if they are, especially if they are or arboreal, which some of these are. Some of them aren't. And then the hominins. I shouldn't have a plural. Not really. We seem to be going out pretty quickly. Um, maybe I won't in a few decades. But this includes the gorillas, the chimpanzees, and then a whole bunch of dead things. Now, the gorillas are currently endangered. Chimpanzees could go under at any time. Bonobos could go extinct. So we start looking right there at, uh-oh, it seems that these are going extinct because everything, you have uh, the, the four species on the bottom there, the hylobates, P. pygmaeus, um, the gorilla, is a, the pan pygmaeus is your um, pygmy chimps or bonobos, uh, the gorilla, the troglodytes, that's chimpanzee, and then everything to the side of that is dead except Homo sapiens. So this is the hominins is not a diverse family tree. If you were to pick family trees to study, you would not want to study the hominins. It's mostly extinct species. Um, you wouldn't want to do horses either. They're also mostly extinct species. So this is our family tree. When you get closer to it, you see that there has been a lot of wastage recently. And you can see that we are in this kind of clade up to the side with Homo ergaster, Rudolphensis, and Habilis. You'll see some absent from there, of course. So who are we? Wise man. Why? We got to make the names. So Homo sapiens means wise man. The first fossils are about 160,000 years old. Uh, they're bipedal. That's different than all the other apes. Those other apes are either arboreal or they are walking on fours, sometimes standing to get a good look around, but mostly walking on all fours. Way larger brain compared to body size. Reduced jaw bones, uh, reduced jaw muscles, shorter digestive tract, maybe from eating more meat, very complex linguistics of which we are the masters of, okay, we have good language, yeah, okay, use good words, and extensive tool use. Think about all the tools I have used just to communicate this using extensive linguistics to your large brains. And you see that Homo sapiens, wise man, this is what we are. And this is who we are, and that is how we are related to other primates. So here's another way of looking at it. This is a cytochrome oxidase phylogeny, taking a phylogeny of um, the cytochrome oxidase is one of our, uh, I think it's one of the alleles, uh, genes in the um, mitochondria. So how related they are, how much change has occurred over time. You see that humans are mostly all together. There's an out group there, and we, will get, we might get back to that. But you see there are five major groups. They share a comb phylogeny, meaning a very recent blowout of, uh, of humans coming from an ancient ancestor group. Um, then you have the chimpanzees. Listen, different species or different groups of chimpanzees are more different than each other than humans are different than each other. So that whole race idea that chimpanzees don't have races, they would have way older, more different races than we do. Uh, bonobos, they're about, they, they um, expanded about the same time we did, actually, and they may be more closely related to us. They may share a more recent common ancestor with us. Uh, well, 
it's, it's even, that's right, even with chimps, but, um, yeah. Gorillas, they're our next most recent um, ancestor, according to the Cytochrome oxidase phylogeny, and there have been more recent diverges, divergences there. Then you got the orangutans and gibbons, which are farther and farther out, according to this uh, molecular technique. How related? Now, your book is beautiful on this, and I could spend a week on it. Uh, it comes with a wide range of hypotheses, molecular evidence, and how interrelated humans, chimps, bonobos, and gorillas are. You should probably review them. It's good stuff to know. Um, here's, it, it, it all goes the same. You look at that sequence divergence for how much percentage sequence were different than, um, the, than chimpanzees. It's 1%. About 1% difference among, uh, for all sequences. Now, it's how the sequences are used, of course, but humans versus orangutans and gorillas uh, really varies, but um, we're very, very closely related to chimps. It is a very recent break, and that's where we get this genetically. So either we were share a very recent common ancestor with chimpanzees, or we were created with about 90 some odd percentage relatedness to chimpanzees for reasons unknown. But that is this. What characteristics do we share with lemurs? What do we share with baboons? What do we share with chimpanzees? No, I didn't cover baboons. Go look for them. What is our closest extant living still relative? And a question for yourself, why do we care? Why does it matter what we are related to? So next time we'll cover some early hominids. Until then, 